How do you use trigonometry to find the area of regular polygons? We're going to continue the video from last week, and I had to split it in two parts. And so I understand that this week's videos are a little bit, little bit messy because I had forgotten that when I gave you guys your videos for the outline on Friday. So this is actually for section 10-5 out of your textbooks, uh, trigonometry and area. And... Um, then we're going to do, after this video, then you have another video for section 10-4. So we're going backwards to area of, um, excuse me, perimeter and area of similar figures. So this one is actually going to be due tomorrow for Tuesday's class. And I'm going to send out a text message reminder to remind you guys. I don't know why I did that. Let me erase that. <laughs> I'm going to send you guys a text message to remind you that um, you do have a video due by tomorrow. And we're going to be practicing this concept all week and a little bit of next week. Okay, here's a reminder of how your notes should be set up to take notes from this video. You're going to first have your section and title up top, and this is for 10-5 section, so make sure you look up the title name. Then this is going to be video title number one. You will have two or three. You're going to draw your notes, and then after that, you're going to review and write your summary, which should be three to four sentences in length. Okay, for this video, we are going to do two examples. Um, I The first one is going to use trigonometry. And let me just give you a little bit of background history for our class this semester. Remember when you guys came back from winter break, the first thing we reviewed was um, was chapter 3 and 4 and then chapter, uh, chapter 8. And chapter 8 was big because it was all on trigonometry. And I told you that we were going to be using trig again this for this second semester. So um, remember your Sokotoa because we're about to apply it right now. So we're going to need to find the area of a regular polygon. I want to remind you that the formula we're going to use is, let's see, I'll write it up top, A equals one half the times the apothem times the perimeter. So I need to find out what A is. And as you can see, I have a, huh. Okay. This is supposed to be a pentagon in a circle, and I just realized that the pentagon never printed out on the slide. So imagine that we have a pentagon in here. Okay, so that's a five-sided figure. So it's going to be something like this. I don't want to butcher it like that and then like that. Okay, cool. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at this five-sided figure, and right here is the apothem. So once we have that, and then once we have the perimeter, and I'll write the perimeter in like blue. So once we have the red, which is the apothem, and then we have the perimeter around the pentagon, which is the blue, we can multiply those numbers together, divided by two or multiply by half, and we can find the area. So um, this, is, this pentagon is inscribed in a circle with radius of one unit. So we went ahead and marked a radius, and it has one unit right there okay so now we need to find the area of the pentagon and since this is so much work it's going to take us a few slides but i want to remind you to pause the video uh write down everything you see on the slide and resume when you're ready to follow along with me okay another typo to not the to apply the formula for area of a regular pentagon you must first find its apothem and perimeter as i spoke before so this was the triangle that we had already written down we're going to go ahead and, I don't know why there's one fifth there. This has so many typos. Sorry, you guys. Just ignore that. Okay. So here we have, maybe it will come back up. I don't know. Here we have the, the, the triangle that we took out of the pentagon. And remember, we had the radius of one. So one side length was one. And we want to find the measure of the central angle, A, B, C. And this is going to be, uh, which is 360, we divide that by 5, and 360 divided by 5 would give us 72. So this entire angle here is 72 degrees. Now that we have found that central angle, and by the way, finding a central angle was a review from last video for section 10-3. Um, we don't need the whole 72. I just really want to isolate this triangle right here. Because if I isolate this triangle, I get a right triangle. And if I have a right triangle, I can use trig and Pythagorean theorem to help me find missing side lengths. So I really only want this angle measurement. And so I'll take the number 72 that I found, 
for the whole angle. And I'm going to divide that by 2 and I will get 36 degrees. And that's where I get this answer right there. So it's 36 degrees right there. And now I have a right triangle. It has 90 degrees here, 36 degrees up here. And if I needed this angle here, I'll put two marks. If I needed that angle, I could find it, but we won't need it. And now we're going to do our trigonometry to help us find out what the side length is for AD right down here. Remember, we're trying to find the apothem, and then we're also trying to find AD to help us get the perimeter. Reminder, rarely in math do you not use something you learned in the past chapters. You will learn and apply after this. So remember, we're applying our SOKATOA. Let's go ahead and write it. So, ka, toa. And notice that they have it here. The sine opposite over hypotenuse is here. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse is here. And tangent opposite over adjacent is here. And so now we have this really small right triangle that we're looking at. Remember the radius was 1. We found the 36 degrees here. So which trig function would be best to use? Well, if we are wanting to find out what the BD is an AD, huh? Sorry, I'm looking over this work and I borrowed this slide from another teacher and I see some incorrect answers. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna mix it up. So please do not write what you see over here. I'm gonna rewrite it for you guys, okay? So this is one. Let's go ahead and first find out what BD is. So I'm going to put A here because that is actually the apothem of the, of the pentagon. Now I have the hypotenuse, which is always one. And then I have my large A, which is the adjacent side. Remember, this is my angle of focus. So I will use cosine of 36 degrees. And that's going to equal... Oh, I see what they did. Okay, yeah. Never mind, you don't have to erase this work. There you go. You don't have to, um, I mean, sorry, you don't have to get rid of that work. I just didn't, I just didn't understand what they wrote, but now I get it. So I'm assigning variables. Cosine adjacent, which is A, over H, which is 1. And now we're going to go ahead and find out what the cosine of 36 is, because that's going to equal our A. Okay, so on the last slide, we found out what the apothem was. It was the cosine of 36 degrees. Plug that in your calculator, and you get a decimal, and you'll see that on, another, on the next slide. But for this slide, we need to also find out what the DC is because that's going to help us get our perimeter. So I'm going to label this as, I want to do P, so I'm going to use X for this side. And I want to find out what X is, so I'm going to need the hypotenuse, and I will need to know the O, the opposite. This is my angle of focus, so I'll use sine. Sine of, of 36 will be x. Instead of dc, I put x, because I like to sign variables. It makes it easier than looking at side lengths. Over bc, which is 1. So really, it's, it's going to be x over 1, or the sine of 36 is going to equal x. x is the same thing as dc. I just like using variables because it makes it easier than having two variables to represent the side length. So let's go back and look at the work you have in your notes. The pentagon has an apothem of cosine 36 degrees. So we are going to take, oh, we're going to just go ahead and do cosine of 36, and that goes in for the apothem. So that's A, apothem there. And then I'm going to need to do the, um, I need to find the perimeter. So I'm going to draw a small picture. You should already have this triangle written down in your graph, in your, um, in your notes. Remember we found that this was sine of 36. So really if I need to find an entire side of the pentagon it's going to be two times the sine of 36 because both parts is sine of 36. This part here and this part here. So that's where they get two times the sine of 36. And then I also need to multiply that by five because I'm looking for the side of a pentagon. So I got this side up here, this side, this side, and then this side. Remember it's five-sided. So 5 times 2 um, times two times the sine of 36 would give us 10 sine of 36. Now remember, this was our formula to find the area. We found the apothem, which is cosine of 36. We found the perimeter, which is 10 times sine of 36. And if you plug all this into your calculator, you'll get the area to be 2.38 square units. 
So that was a, notice how long that example was and how to use a few slides just because of all the information. But the goal is to use this area formula, then first find out what your apothem is using trig, then find out what your perimeter is using trigonometry as well, and then once you have that, you can plug it in, multiply it, and get your final answer. Okay, here's our second example, but it doesn't give us a picture, and we don't really need it because um, we have everything that we need here in the problem. So let's take a look at what they're asking for. Uh, pendulums, the enclosed closure on the floor underneath the Falkalt pendulum at the Houston Museum of Natural Science in Houston, Texas, is a regular dodecagon. How many sides does a dodecagon have? Look in your textbooks or look online. Figure that out. You should know. With side lengths of 4.3 feet and a radius of about 8.3 feet. What is the floor area of the enclosure? So, let's see. They gave us a side length of 4.3 feet. That is awesome. Because if I know a length, then I can find the perimeter. And then they gave us a radius of about 8.3 feet. So, if it's the radius, usually that ends up being our apothem as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's see if that is the case. If not, we might have to use some trigonometry to help us. Okay, so here's a picture. And it also is, in a, we're going to start with the solution. A dodecagon has 12 sides, okay? So it's not 10 or 11, it's just going to be a 12-sided figure. And so the perimeter of the enclosure is going to be 12 times 4.3. Remember they said that one length, one side length was going to be 4.3. So if I want to know what all these side lengths are, I'm going to multiply 4.3 by 12 because that's how many sides I have. Or I can add 4.3 12 times and I would get 51.6 feet. So I already have my perimeter, which is 51.6 feet. And notice they gave us the radius, which is 8.3 feet, but that is still not the apothem that we need because the apothem would go down the middle right here. So we're going to have to find the apothem. Okay, go ahead and write everything you see here, then um, then resume the video when you're ready to follow along with me. And I'll assume that you did that, so I'll just keep going. This is the triangle from the dodecagon that we're using. And normally we would need to find out what this central angle is and then divide it in two to find one angle and then we can use trigonometry. But because they gave us so many side lengths, we can actually use the Pythagorean theorem. So it makes it a little bit easier than using trigonometry. Now what we're going to do is we are going to uh, see that 4.3 was the side length here. If I divide that in 2, I get 2.15. So I have this side length here. And then the radius was 8.3, so I have that side length there. And now I use Pythagorean Theorem to find out what my apothem is. And if I do that, I will get about 8 feet. So this is about 8 feet in length, and this is just by rounding. okay? And that makes sense, right, because it can't be greater than the hypotenuse of this triangle. So now that I have my apothem, which is 8, and I have my perimeter, which is from the last slide, which was 51.6, I will plug that back into this formula, this very powerful formula. 8 for apothem, 51.6 for the perimeter. Multiply that together and then multiply it by 1 half, and I get 206.4 feet squared. Notice that I keep putting my units down. I expect you guys to be doing the same. We just reviewed over these last two videos possible ways to find the area of a polygon. You can first, if given the apothem and the perimeter, you can just use this formula right away. Or if you need to find any one, the apothem or perimeter, you might need to use trigonometry. Or the last example I showed you is sometimes you might have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Either way, once you have the apothem and the perimeter, you can always find the area of a polygon. Okay, I'm doing something a little bit new and different for the videos. At the very end, I'm going to bring back the question title of the video to then have you answer it. How do you use trigonometry to find the area of a poly regular polygon? Look at the first example we did for this video and list all of the steps and then put that into a paragraph and that will serve as your summary. So you may want to begin this uh, your summary as to find the area of a regular polygon using trigonometry, you first need to and I'll give it to you to help you guys out, you would first need to find the central angle. And that's when you're using trigonometry. Okay? Bring all your questions to the class.